Hey, what's up? This is Jesse Warden. Tonight, we're going to cover the number predicate, and we're going to compose it with other predicates to form a higher level one. Normally, what you do is you create these really low level pure functions. Predicates are a type of pure function that returns true or false, and you start composing them together. So if you have a really strong, obviously it would never fail function, and compose that with others, then you have a more complex, but probably will never fail function. You're creating something very strong. You're composing these functions together. Eventually, you're starting to make assertions on things. So for example, predicates will validate the laws of the universe and say that this is in fact a string, or in tonight's case, this is a number, it's positive, and it's within the range that we want. Start asserting things. You say this is a string, and then you work your way up. This is a ability score that I like. This is a strong warrior. This is a working program. Start low level with these predicates, and make these assertions, compose them together, and your program is eventually composed the same way, and you have a very pure, strong program that's easier to test, easier to make assertions about, and if not, you can correct those assertions with unit test, testing the individual pieces together. Let's cover the number predicate this evening. The next is our number. So we don't need negative numbers, we don't need zero, and we certainly don't want weird things like NAN, which is not a number, or infinity. So we're going to have to create a legitimate predicate for numbers as well. So we'll say legit number. And actually, you know what? Let me change this to legit just to keep it nice and English-like. Copy pasta coding. So we'll say legit number. Now we could do is number o and is nan o equals equals false. But the problem with that is that then we have to check and not math infinity, and that's just ridiculous. So Lodash knows that this is a very common operation. People want normal numbers that are within a certain range. So we're going to do something called is finite, which basically means it's not nan, it's not infinite, it's a good number. So we'll say if finite number. Now we're abstracting this because we could change our mind later what actually is a legitimate number for this thing. So for now we're going to say legit number. We'll test it out and see how it goes. Test it out with one. One is in fact a legit number. Let's test it out with a string of one. Sometimes JavaScript is notorious for attempting to coerce strings successfully sometimes to numbers. Notice that one is a legit number, but the one is not. Let's try a new date, which can default to a number if you use value of. Notice that date is not false. Now, if we were to get the value of property to get the millisecond since epoch, that would in fact be a number that's legit. So numbers are good. It's a function. It takes the same input, same output, no weird mutating state. All these functions do is take something to tell you if it's legit or not. In this case, is this a legit string? Yep. Is this a legit number? Yep or no. Very, very helpful. Now let's do the same thing, except this case, we need to know if this number is positive. Let's create another one to say, look, we don't want a negative strength. That doesn't make any sense. So we're going to say, is O greater than zero? Any number, including decimals, that's greater than zero is considered positive. Now we're not going to deal with integers here. If it's a 0 0.001, that's fine as a strength, but we would prefer whole numbers. But we're not going to go that hardcore. So let's test this guy out. We'll do log number is positive one log number is positive zero, which should be false, and log positive number negative one. So we should get true, false, false. So we'll run it, and there you go. True, false, false. One is in fact positive, zero is not, and negative one is not. Great, so now we have legit numbers, and we know if they're positive. Now one way of dealing with multiple predicates in a row is to simply just use short circuit. That way you have a list of them, and if it doesn't make it to the end, it's not legit. So we can use JavaScript's built-in short circuit functionality for ands and ors. So we'll say legit number. And if it's a legit number, cool. Is it positive? So we'll say number is positive. If it matches these two criteria, this is legit. This is something that we can get for strength, dexterity, and con. So let's test this guy out. Is one legit? It better be, because that's the default value. How about 16, which is massive? Okay, how about string of one? Now, a lot of these we know will pass very well because simple, simple things up here pass really, really well. Now, I'm going to show you a gotcha here in a minute, but I want to test out these just to verify JavaScript is confirming the basic laws of the type JavaScript universe. We'll also try an array just for fun. 
So 1 and 16 are legit ability scores. That's fantastic. They're both a legit number, and they're positive. They're above 0. The string of 1, the cal, the date, and the array are not legit values for this. Someone could say, well, hey, if we said we used something like TypeScript, and we use this in number, how would that handle infinity? How would that handle nan? And how would you coerce that with this? Now, TypeScript, especially too, has some wonderful ways of doing some very hardcore ways of creating your own custom types and getting strong typing for that at compile time. However, it doesn't handle that at runtime, which is what some people make the case for assertion JS to say that, okay, not only do we enforce types at compile time, also at runtime, if this would be data from the server or something else, we'd actually have some reasons. So we're handling both using normal JavaScript without using TypeScript. Notice here, we do not check for number. We basically have two ways of handling this. The fact that I didn't check for a number and that this could in fact throw. So if we passed in a string, um, it may or may not work. So for example, if I go log number is positive, you'll notice that I use this guy already to build other predicates. So if our foundation isn't strong, everything built on top of these comes crashing down. So you need to be really, really create some strong foundation with some really basic predicates and build up from there. So it seems simple at first, but even basic data types become very complex very quickly. Number is positive cal. And actually, we'll do a string real quick. We'll do a one. So let's log these out and see what happens. So we actually get number is positive one as a string. <laughs> Now, cal obviously didn't, and that's because JavaScript can detect numbers inside of strings and coerce them. It's pretty good at this, too. You can even put a space in front of it, and JavaScript goes, dude, I know what you meant. You meant a one. But actually, you and I know I didn't. We don't want a string. If we start using that to do hardcore addition and game logic, it's going to fall flat on its face. So you basically have two options. A, utilize base-level predicates everywhere, if you would like, and that's fine. So you can say is number or in this case, is finite. Right. Now it's going to say false because we did this. But that's one option is that to, even though you have other predicates, the other way is to say I'm sharing amongst friends. And what that means is that you know that predicates are going to be used by other predicates. So for example, if you're writing a bunch of predicates, you know that you're not going to put a number as positive in a situation where he'd be forced to deal with the string. Now this goes back to how pure is it? <laughs> what's, your, what's your range of definition of pure function, right? The second thing is if unit tests are at a reasonable coverage around the higher level stuff, it'll catch those kind of things. You don't really have to worry about it. But it's really up to you. So you can either follow the rule of everything above it, make sure that it's hardcore, and then these things below rely on these guys up top, so it's the amongst friends. Otherwise, you can just be hardcore and put you know, that I is finite in here and check every single predicate. It's really up to you.